got any uh, freestyle you want to lay down, Samuel? You know, I'm all freestyled out. <laughs> that, that last freestyle that I did, you know, that took everything that I had. You didn't even freestyle. I did. It was a diss track. That was like weeks ago. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a one-hit wonder, man. Like, Tupac is still making diss tracks, and he's dead, and you can't do, like, one every... Nope. Did I say I was Tupac? Nope. Okay, then. <laughs> if I said I was, like, Tupac, then you could hold me to it, but... <laughs> Welcome to Nerds to Men. We are uh, recording the podcast today live from New World Comics here in Oklahoma City. I'm Brad Reed, joined by Cameo and Buck Berlin, owner of New World Comics, so... Uh, Thank you for letting us hang out today. Um, I wanted to ask, New World Comic Con, we're getting really close. Oh, yeah. Are you feeling the heat? Uh, Starting to, yeah. 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 Now now that we got through uh, SoonerCon over the weekend, it's the, oh, yeah. All right, so now we have a month. Yep. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Um, Anything new that's uh, every day? (laughs) Uh, We're we're getting the uh, the, uh, panel schedule kind of figured out and we're uh, we're figuring out the uh, the kids carnival and talking to a few more people of uh you know some some special guests oh cool yeah awesome uh that's coming up july 28th tell everybody where it's gonna be it's gonna be at the state fairgrounds in the centennial building awesome i yeah. can't wait uh every year it's around the same time as my birthday so it's like a little birthday present to me cool. <laughs> new world comic con four uh, yeah, four. Yeah, yeah four. con hard with a vengeance. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's coming up. And then uh, we we got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about today. Uh, we mentioned Luke Cage. We're not going to spoil it, though, but we are going to talk a little bit about that. We're gonna he talk dies. About the Ninja Turtles. Thanks, Cameo. Spoilers. <laughs> Everybody dies. Some more Batman news. We got some great interviews with every Provo from Everybody Panic and Adam and Kizzy from right yep, here yep. in Oklahoma City. So uh, I think we go ahead and get into the segment that I like to call Nerd Flicks and Chill. Ooh. Hey, uh, Forrest, turn that uh, that pop down fist a little bit there. Yeah. Nerd Flicks and Chill. This is, uh, this is your chill music right here, Cameo. Is it though? <laughs> it depends on how you like to chill. Uh, I, I guess so. <laughs> if you're, if you're voting today, you might be uh, you might like to chill a certain way, and then this would be the music. Oh, uh, okay, to. okay. <laughs> if you feel uh, what I'm saying, I yeah. Uh, I don't remember what the state question was. Seven eighty eight. Yeah. So legalize it. All right. <laughs> I don't want to. You know, this is live, so I don't want to influence voters. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I do. <laughs> 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 All right. Now, but we got to talk about the the nerd flicks that are on Netflix. Of mm-hmm. course, Luke Cage came out over the weekend. Yep. And Buck, he, uh, you didn't get to see any of it because you no, were busy with yeah. SoonerCon, right? Yeah. So, Cameo and I have only seen a few episodes so far, but I wanted to just kind of talk a little bit about it because I thought it was awesome so far. I even like so what I've seen. I almost think, like, I kind of like it better than season one just because it yeah. hits the ground running. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, and, you know, and I got to say this, uh, Simone Missick, a friend of Nerds to Men, mm-hmm. uh, who plays Misty Knight in the show, she looks a whole heck of a lot sexier. With one arm? With one arm. <laughs> okay. She does. She. I mean, I, she's beautiful anyway. She, yeah. Right? But, yeah, she only has one arm now uh, in this in mm. this series. Spoiler alert. Yeah. If you didn't watch The Defenders, then you don't know how she lost it. So. <laughs> Hopefully everybody <laughs> ran away. watched The Defenders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, so I'm where I'm at so far, uh, Danny Rand hasn't showed up. Mm-mm. But uh, I love what's going on with Shades. Yeah. Like he's – I don't know what – like is he like getting a conscience now or like what's what's going on? I don't – I mean what I've seen of him, he, he didn't seem to have much of a conscience. And, uh, you know, now that he's hooking up with the, the boss lady. Yeah, which is kind of weird. It is kind of weird. So like, weird. Their little scene where they're, I think they're getting it on, it was kind of like, Ew. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, this Luke Cage is very rated R. You know? Yeah, him and Night yeah. Nurse also. Oh, I liked the song when it, uh, when they were doing the thing. Yeah, and Night Nurse <laughs> came on. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that was pretty good. That so I guess it's good. safe to say that she is a Night Nurse now. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. All right. Cool. 
Um, let's see. Like I say, uh, I I haven't. I've heard that Danny Rand does show up though, right? Because some of the early uh, reviews are saying that the issues with his fighting and stuff yeah. from the the uh, the other show, Iron Fist. They've fixed now. Yeah, well, it, and, you know, they, they've come out and said that uh, during Iron Fist, you know, he didn't really get any training. They were just like, oh, hey, guess what you're doing? <laughs> yeah. It was like, I'm doing what now? They're like, no, no, yeah, just spin off that wall and kick that dude. Yeah. It was like, uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> and that's and that's what we got. Mm-hmm. Um, who is the, the, what's the name of the, I guess he's, is he Jamaican? Bushmaster. Bushmaster. He's a badass, too. Yes, he is. Uh, and I can see, like, with his fighting style and everything, why we his might cap- see Iron Fist at some point. His Capoeira, yeah, dude, he yeah. he was <laughs> man. Yeah. He he owned a person in there. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna say who it is because I don't want to ruin anything. <laughs> yeah, but he owned somebody in there. And also, I, I mean, there there, it seems to me like this season is crazy gruesome so far. Yeah. I mean, there's, like, one scene where they, ugh, they stabs the guy, like, in the face. Right. Dude, like, it kind of reminded me of that uh, scene when they went to uh, uh, Shogun World. Where, oh, in Westworld, uh, yeah. Where the the, the Maeve, yeah. uh, Japanese woman, right, like, did that to the, the whatever he was, yeah. like, the emperor or something. I don't know. Yeah. I was it, like, oh, my goodness. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty gruesome, and th- and that's not the only one. I, uh, there was a few different scenes, and like I, like I said, I'm only maybe five episodes in, and it is a it is definitely a gruesome series so far, which I dug. I liked uh, I liked it. Uh, my favorite quote so far is, um, which I really thought was interesting. They 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 are analyzing kind of Luke Cage's. He's a celebrity now, mm. and. You know, he's even got endorsement deals now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the guy goes, just because you're a woke superhero doesn't mean you have to be a broke superhero. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I think uh, same thing with podcasters. Just because we're woke podcasters doesn't mean we want to be broke podcasters. That's also true. <laughs> so advertise no, with us. <laughs> nobody wants to be broke. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, like I say, without spoiling it too much, I just thought, uh, so far, it, it kicks a lot of ass for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it starts off just, just right off the gate. You know, Luke Cage is kicking ass. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. and you know, you, you, like like you said, I think it's better than the second season, and or the, I'm sorry, the first season. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I don't know. I like Mike Coulter as Luke Cage. Oh, he's perfect. Because at first, you know, yeah. I was like, man, you know, I kind of wanted to see Terry Crews because he's a lot buffer, but the way you know. He's set up in the comics is going to be totally different than how he is going to be portrayed in real life. And I think, you know, I don't know. I think it's the way his head is shaped. Like, he has a <laughs> Luke Cage head. Well, the, the the way that he's written, like, Terry Crews has, like, the perfect mad face. But yeah. so far in the, the series, he hasn't had to be, like, just, ex, like, extremely, you know, rage-filled. You know, he's right. just, he gets mad and then takes care of it. Yeah. yeah. He's yes. not like. You know, because Terry Crews has that that just ah thing. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, oh, he gets asked to have coffee again. Yeah, by an older woman. Yeah, an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because she didn't understand it. No. <laughs> and he was like, he just like chuckles. Yeah. He goes, ah. yeah. If you ask Luke Cage to get coffee, that means you're getting it. Yeah. <laughs> get some of that coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I say definitely so far so good. So. We'll probably catch up on the rest of them before our next show and, mm-hmm. you know, maybe have a spoiler conversation then. Uh, I, I don't know. You think you might be able to watch it before then, Bob? I'll try. Gonna, I just need yeah. to sit down and make sure that I have time and yeah. make sure that the wife has time. I know it's got to be hard. Yeah. You need a huge TV in here that well, but, plays uh, Luke you know, Cage 24-7. Well, you know, the, then we wouldn't be the family-friendly store that we try to be. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, because it is definitely a hard R on this show. Yeah. Uh, but so far, like I said, I- I'm loving it so far. Um, uh, Ramiz Swice, thank you for tuning in. Christine Lee, I like that look now. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, that sounds good. That last name, though. Yeah, I was like, pretty somebody sexy. was commenting on my <laughs> stuff the other day. I was like, who is Christine Lee? I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I know who that is. And my buddy Byron, he's a, he's watching too. So what's up, bye? Yeah, comment along. Uh, this segment's called Nerd Flicks and Chill, so I want to let you know uh, what is coming in July to Netflix? All of the Jurassic Park movies, not 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 the newest one, like mm-hmm. uh, that came yeah. out before this Jurassic World, 
Uh, but everything, you know, Lost World, all the Jurassic Parks. That's they, cool. They're all coming to Netflix. Which, yeah, I think it's great because I want to watch them all again, uh, especially with Jurassic World coming out. And mm-hmm. you got to see mm-hmm. a sneak preview, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, I liked it better than the first uh, Jurassic World movie. Did you? Yeah. Um, you know, they it, n- no spoilers, but, you know, basically they start off in, you know, the island and then, you know, end in the city. Sure. Which is pretty cool, and I, I it like... It sounds a lot like the, the ori- like the original second Jurassic Park, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, basically. So is this a... Did they just remake it? You know, I gotta, I gotta watch the second one again. Yeah, to, which to, we'll be able to do. In yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, I think it was more of a thriller in this in this movie oh, than, yeah. than an actual like, oh, dinosaurs are chasing me. Yeah. So yeah, this one's this is more of a thriller. I, I really want to go see that. Uh, probably going to see that before the next show as well. That's that's high on my mm-hmm. list of things to see. Oh, and uh, Buck was saying Glow's coming out this Friday. I totally yep. forgot about that. Yeah. So season two, gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Um, that that's uh, and only a like, very good show. Only like a couple of them are gorgeous. Yeah, Mark, <laughs> uh, I enjoy Mark Maron in that uh, in that show. He's I don't know if you've listened to his podcast. He uh, I think I mentioned it to you. He's a great interviewer. Uh, mm. I love listening to him because he just approaches things a lot differently than I would. So it's good to listen to him and kind of get some uh, get some tips, some yep. hot tips. But uh, but yeah, um, and then uh, leaving. If you haven't uh, watched all of the Lethal Weapons on Netflix, you better do them quick. Oh no, because they're out, like oh, just like no. the uh, star no. of the uh, the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, did I hear that? Did does anybody watch the Lethal Weapon show? No, I've seen a few. I've been meaning to get to it because it it looked like it was great. Yeah. And yeah, uh, after I heard all that was going down, it was like, man, I'm not sure I want to. Yeah, because uh, I guess the guy, the the I can't remember what's his name, uh, Riggs, he, the guy who plays him, I guess is a huge jerk, and so he got uh, let go from the show. Or... I have a feeling that they're both huge jerks. It's just one of them is more famous. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, the Wayans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I think I heard like Stifler is gonna be. Uh, oh no! Yeah. He's this no. replacement. It's like his cousin or something. That or is, <laughs> I don't know how how he's going to replace him on the show, uh-huh. but, but he's going to be the one to replace him. Uh, so oh, yeah. I don't know. We'll see how that works. I didn't know he was even really doing much. Maybe well, he probably wasn't. It was like TV show. You say? Yeah, yeah. That phone rang. He's like, yeah, I'm 100 percent in. <laughs> like, hey, what are you doing right now? Nothing. No, like acting was no nothing. <laughs> Please, yeah. So hire me. That is our Nerd Flicks and Chill. It's now time for our Nerd Update. We got a bunch of nerd news to share with you. So it's time to nerd up, as Cameo likes to say. That's right. <laughs> Not you, Cameo, the band. Oh. Word no, they, up. They say word up. Well. I say nerd up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but here's what we got to talk about. And like I say, everybody who is watching along, we would like to know what you guys have to say about this as well because... We got news that there's going to be another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie reboot. Yeah. Which, to me, isn't bad news. Uh, I did hear that Michael Bay is still the executive producer. Oh. But, but, check this out. Uh, There's somebody that's, you know, um, in charge of Paramount and is going to go a different direction. Right. Um, I forgot his name. Um, let's see. Uh, I see. I think maybe like Michael Bay is a, is in producer. Like it's one of those things where they were like, we're not going to really go with you for the next movie like we had planned, but we'll still give you a producer credit. Mm-hmm. Right. And I hope that's it. Because I mean, I'm not just I'm just not a big fan of Michael Bay movies. No. Yeah. I, I mean, Armageddon is kind of the only one, and and even then, like it's the, you know. Yeah. What was the name of the movie? Was it The Island that we watched? Yeah. That was uh, pretty good. And that was a Michael Bay movie. I'm pretty... Because I was like, this doesn't seem like a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. any lens flare, so... Yeah, well, at the very <laughs> end, like, when they get up, you know, they're out in the real world, and there's, like, a huge, like, uh, chase scene with the cars and stuff. I was like, oh, I see it there. But for the most part, that's not near as, like, Transformery and yeah. stuff like that as all of his other movies. You know, I, I just found out that he, uh, he got to start... On uh, commercials, like he did the uh, like his first commercial was the first gut milk commercial. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. And like from there, you know, they were like, "Oh, you're a commercial superstar." And then from there, they're like, 
Make movies. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> all right, I'll do it. Yeah. Sure, yeah. why not? But I did this all for a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would like to see, I would like to, I know everybody says it and so it gets kind of old, but you know, I want to see a gritty movie, but I'd like to see like a, a grittier ter- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Awesome. See, I, I feel like this, this last one was them trying to make a grittier one. Like, yeah, it just like, didn't like, work out. You know, oh, look at the teenage boys making teenage boy jokes. It was yeah. The, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but it, and then I just didn't feel like they captured the turtles that well in that one. And, you know, they seem like big monsters and <laughs> right. <laughs> instead of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know. Yeah, that's what um, this story was saying in the on uh, comicbook.com uh, or whatever mm-hmm. this oh, is. Oh, the saying. comic book uh, resources? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They were saying Senior. how um, uh, that, you know, he made them into monsters. And hopefully, you know, Andrew Dodge, who's uh, going to be writing the script for it, um, that was the one who has a new vision for the turtles. So uh. hopefully we'll get to, you know, maybe – my size Ninja Turtles, right? You know, right. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, but. back to fighting the you know the Foot Clan or stuff like that. Because did we see much? I don't remember seeing. Not really. I, I saw the first one, and the, the only part that was like, yeah, that's Ninja Turtles, was the elevator scene. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like yeah. It was the yeah, that's that's them. The rest of it, it was the I don't know these guys. Like, yeah, you know, they're sure they're turtles, and I guess they're ninjas, but they're. They're not my characters that I that right, I right right you know. uh, yeah I, I will I really I want them to do another puppet movie <laughs> you know I would I would not be mad with that yeah. I would not be mad with because you know when their their fighting scenes in that movie in the first movie was a whole heck of a lot better than the CG stuff that they were doing yeah. in this movie so my question to is you know how do you guys feel watching how do you feel about a reboot again. Because it's like you know ugh, another reboot, but they could well, do better. Yeah, but but I mean that's the thing is you know we're on our third Spider-Man reboot and th- oh hey look we finally better. got it right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so I think that would be cool and then also I, I kind of want to know so you know what movies we were talking about this at the tattoo shop the other day what movies from your childhood would mm-hmm. you like to see remade you know Gremlins <laughs> they're making a sequel really a Gremlins three oh, yeah nice. Um, but like uh, the last Starfighter, I think would be a good one that could be updated and be pretty cool. Yeah, uh, a lot of people Four. said like maybe He Man, Fantastic Four, <laughs> man, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I pray uh, every morning and every night. <laughs> a He Man remake because the uh, other one was trash. I want a remake <laughs> of the the original. Like, yeah, take the original script and just try to remake it. <laughs> See what they do. Hey, right. yeah. What about Flash and Gordon? Uh, that'd be good. I would like to see that. Yeah. Man, it, see, I, I don't think that you're going to top the, the, like, man, check out this Queen soundtrack. And, you know, like, yeah. you'd have to find someone of that same caliber and, like, that's true. you know. That's true. Because they, they, they were like, oh, that's really hokey. Let's embrace that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And whereas now they're like, that's too weird. Let's stay away from that. Uh-huh. How do we update that to not make it weird? Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you seen the, uh, the, they released some artwork and stuff for the uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? It's garbage. It looks so bad. <laughs> it's so garbage. I mean, I get, like, it, it's a neat idea that they're different turtles. Right. You are know, like, mm-hmm. oh, look, one's a red hair slider. But they're all supposed to be, like, actual brothers. Like, actual, like. Right. Re- not like, oh, we're brothers in the sense that we all grew up together. And, right. You know. Seems like they're, they're either their dad or their mom got around. <laughs> I mean. well uh so yeah this one's gonna be a little different i don't even know i was looking at some of the villains i didn't see like shredder john cena is gonna voice draxum in this one Ooh, draxum uh some of the other villains uh <laughs> tell me if you know <laughs> meat sweats no, that's, that's I, I've it. been there. Yeah, I was gonna say that's yeah. that's that sounds like my nickname yeah. after a roast beef, <laughs> a roast beef sandwich. Um, Hypnopotamus. No. Nope. Warren Stone nope. and Alberto. No. Yeah. So wait, wait, Alberto. Yeah. All right. So or, yeah, we need to start rumors now that like Alberto is the next big thing. Like yeah, hey, I'm down. Yeah, next time you, you interview Rob Paul's and be like so. Alberto, I hear that he <laughs> is the next thing. <laughs> is he related to Camel Toe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alberto. That's terrible cameo. Hey, I mean, you know. But, uh, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> listen, it's a Nickelodeon cartoon. But yeah, and it has the, t- it has the uh, chance to be really bad, but. The, yeah. the, the last one was awesome. Man, mm-hmm. 
they like the the CG uh, Ninja Turtles like was the movies. No, 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 no. The, no. the cartoon on the cartoon. Yeah, because then they what was the then they spin off a couple of animated movies of that that one or was that no. different? No, no, no. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. But that was amazing, man. Yeah. Like they yeah. like they did so much like a, adult content with this with that show. It, it was it was made like for adults with kids in mind. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and honestly, that's that's how you need to do. Kid properties because you know if it's just strictly for kids that no one's going to watch it. Kid, right. Kids will like this is beneath me. I I know that this is terrible. Yeah, right. I mean I'm going to watch it just because you know I'm you know I love Ninja Turtles, yeah. but I I am not a fan of the artwork. Um, it kind of reminds me of you know Teen Titans Go. Yeah. Wait, like, well eh. now okay, so I used to be so against Teen Titans Go. Uh-huh. Just I was like, oh, this is trash. It's garbage. I sat down and watched one, and I was like, this is trash and garbage. <laughs> I sat down and watched the second one, because, you know, I'm glutton for punishment. Trash and garbage. The third one, I was like, oh, this is genius. Mm-hmm. So, there, there's one joke that, that got me. Like, Cyborg and Beast Boy go to the future, and they're like, hey, let's break protocol, uh, call ourselves. So, they, they call up uh, Beast Boy, and like, hey, is, or uh, they call up Cyborg, like, hey, is your refrigerator running? Oh, yeah, go catch it. <laughs> then Beast Boy's like, oh, I'm going to call myself. Hey, is Beast Boy there? Oh, he did? Oh, God, how? I'm so sorry. <laughs> this was a bad idea. I was like, oh, I'm in. <laughs> <clears throat> um, okay, well, what was the uh, was earlier 2000s, right? They had like a CGI Ninja Turtle movie. Oh, yeah. yeah that was just a TMNT. Yeah. I actually thought those were pretty good. That one it was, was good. yeah. 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 So, uh, well, uh, Stephanie Cerny, want to say hi? She's watching, Woo! of course. Uh, she mentioned, she made a comment, better than season one. I think maybe she's talking about Luke Cage. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, okay. Maybe. Okay, okay. We agree. Or she's talking she's about saying. nerds to men. Ooh. Nerd, oh, <laughs> dang. I, I, hey, if that, that's okay by me. Better season two. all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what we want. That's what we want for sure. Okay, let's uh, let's switch to a little bit of Batman news, which is confusing as all hell. But we're going to talk about it. <laughs> so the Matt Reeves Batman movie uh, is set to also, they're saying that it's a reboot. Uh, but it still takes place in the uh, DCEU. Mm-hmm. It may feature a younger Bruce Wayne. And it may be linked to the new Joker origin movie, the Todd Phillips movie with Joaquin Phoenix. And, of course, we talked about Robert De Niro maybe joining that. So what you're saying is that this is going to be more like comic books than any other movie. Yeah, it could yeah. be, sure. <laughs> so yeah. let's reboot in the middle of things and not explain it. We're good. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, well, how does that even work? Uh, obviously, I feel like this is a way to move on from Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. So two things. Here's my theories. Two things of how this could work. One uh, it's just Ben Affleck, you know, kind of like how we started where Wonder Woman and, and uh, you know, at the beginning of Wonder Woman, she was in the present, mm-hmm. you know, talking to Batman and stuff. And then it goes back to the so maybe it's a flashback to something that happened alongside of what's going on with it, because the Todd Phillips is supposed to be uh, kind of the killing joke origin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then. So there's either that where it's Ben Affleck and they introduce a younger Batman and kind of maybe hand the torch. Or I'm thinking still that maybe the Flashpoint, you know, they're not calling it Flashpoint anymore. Yeah. But that doesn't. No, I heard that. Well, the thing that came out said when it was known as Flashpoint. So it still could be Flashpoint. But I. (laughs) <laughs> it's a no. I think everything in the DCEU right now, nothing is solid anyway. Yeah. So, but um, like their foundation, maybe the Flashpoint <laughs> sets things differently or sets it back to the past or something. Mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think about it? Uh, I, I mean, like we said last week, it, uh, I think that we can have several different you know movies going on all at once and. and you know, they could set that up for a big crossover movie. Like, hey, look, we have two Batman mm-hmm. going on right now. We have three Superman, and we have, you know, no Wonder Woman. And look, eight Flashes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and just the, you know. It guess, I guess it all just depends uh, as far as the DCEU, right? I mean, yeah. if they had, like, a bunch of different versions, I understand that. But if they're trying to keep some kind of congruity or whatever with the, all the movies in the DCEU... 
It seems like they're muddying the waters just well, they, a little They bit. definitely are, but, <laughs> I mean, you know, right now it's the, I'm along for the ride, let's see what they do. Yeah. 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 And then it's crazy to me because Matt Reeves has been attached to this movie for a while now, mm-hmm. and it doesn't seem like they're, they've got any kind of solid ground that they're working on. You know, everything's just still up in the air, but... Uh, some rumors are that we'll hear some more stuff at San Diego Comic Con. That'd be kind of uh, cool. But you know, yeah. with Matt Reeves, you know, I don't, I, I trust him because I really enjoyed Planet of the Apes. Yeah. So with that being said, I think, I think it's more of you know the actors than than anything. I don't think it's him. It's just like okay, well, I got this script, or you know, I'm working on this script. So you're saying it's all the bureaucracy of the? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I mean, if you have Ben Affleck over here talking about, oh, I don't want to be Batman anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I hate my life. You know, blah, yeah, blah, blah. yeah. Like, I'm going to make millions of dollars doing this, but I don't really don't want to. Like, it's just like, come on, man. Like, it, it's more of the actors than anything. I yeah. think. I just want to know who's the young Batman, <laughs> David Mazus. <laughs> get out <laughs> one more season of gotham and then he jumps into the movies watch him get like so beefed up for this last season yeah. like, oh here he yeah. is yeah that's weird 17 year olds <laughs> on roids <laughs> hey it works it does, it Shut does. Up, <laughs> <laughs> let us know what you think about these nerd update stories we of course want to hear what you think and we want to read your comments on upcoming shows All right, we have a new rock and roll rundown where I talk on the phone with Provo, who's the guitarist for Everybody Panic. It's the rock and roll rundown here on Nerds to Men. I am Brad Reed, and I'm joined on the phone by my good friend Provo of Everybody Panic. How's the weather out there, first and foremost, in California where you are? Oh, it's always great. <laughs> one That's of the why big it costs re- so much to live here. Yeah, I was going to say one of the big reasons you move there, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's there's other more important reasons, but that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a it's a definite bonus when you're living out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people that you get like desensitized to weather out here, like hanging out out here for so long. Yeah. And going anywhere else in the country, it's like completely opposite. Well. <laughs> I went out there and hung out with you guys uh, last year in August, and then we ended up going up north to Hemp Fest in Seattle, and I just remember it was just so nice because it was in August, and here in Oklahoma, you step outside, and immediately, if you're kind of a bigger guy like me especially, you might feel a trickle, <laughs> a, a bead of sweat. If you're anybody yeah. out there, you're going to feel that. It's hot. It's yeah. humid. It's great. But in but in California it was like ah it's a, it's a cool ocean breeze it was great it was great so yeah, it was it was like chilly yesterday like sixty something degrees walked yeah. outside I was like oh man maybe I should have worn a hoodie today <laughs> right well that's that I, I remember going to San Diego when I was a little bit younger and everybody wore hoodies and and it was summertime I was like what is going on here. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about the band, though. Everybody Panic, you guys recorded basically an EP's worth of songs with Logan Mater of Machine yep. Head and Soulfly. And uh, how did that come about? Was it just, you know, were you a fan of Logan Mater and reached out to him? Or, you know, how did that idea come about? Because previously, you produced everything, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, we'd been talking about it for a while. Like, we wanted to work with a number of different people just to see what kind of different sounds we can come up with you know what i mean yeah i've always been a fan of logan's he's worked with i worked with him through ricketts and just known about him and loved his productions and just his musician side as well so reached out to him and uh worked with him for the six songs that we just did it was a lot of fun he uh he is really good musically he's a genius musically so it was just real nice to go in there Honestly, for me, since I did do everything all the time, it was nice to just go in there and get to be the musician and not have to worry about all the other technical shit. So. <laughs> I feel like it's like when I'm doing the podcasts, when, whenever I can just be a guest and not have to set up all the equipment and produce everything, it's just nice to kind of relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I not have to deal with all the technical, is this tone correct or is this part, you know, or is this EQ correct or any of the other bullshit it goes into making a record i just got to be the musician part and help write songs and help create the songs instead of all the other aspects of it so it was a lot of fun you know having somebody like him to be able to take over that position it was pretty easy to just hand over the reins you know 
Right. And did you get kind of what you were thinking you would get out of it? Did Like some new ideas and new directions that you might not have thought of? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, a bunch of the songs were written when we went in, but some of them we would rewrite while we were there. Like he would have a cool idea and be like, you know, this is cool, but let's try, what about this? You know, and throw, throw another idea out there. So it was cool to have somebody else to bounce that type of stuff off of. And he had good, I mean, his ideas were good. Most of the ones he threw out there we used. So, right. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. And I think the, the record came out really good. The tunes are pretty f- amazing. So anything you kind of learned new about the band as, you know, as a whole throughout that experience? No, I mean, I think we're, we're trying to work on new ideas all around anyways. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're trying to expand and not just be, stuck in one type of sound like we want to we want to see all the different sounds that we're capable of so i mean it was a little bit of a new experience in different ways but nothing you know nothing too drastic right and i feel like listening to the songs there are some definite steps in new directions in some songs and then but overall it's still true to the everybody panic sound yeah yeah it's it's still in our world Mm -hmm. that we've created but definitely some of it's a little different than what we've done in previous previous records now you guys have two eps that you put out what the first one was self-titled right yeah yeah and then attack was the second one so and this one do you plan because i know right now you guys are releasing the uh, singles dead heroes bullets yeah. is already out and uh what's the next single the next one's power and pain actually i'm i'm uploading all the stuff for it right now so it should be available probably by the time you hear this uh, awesome, awesome! I really like that song. I was listening to it, and like I think that sometimes some of your music would sound good. Like uh, I watch WWE and NXT, and I can't remember the name of the band that uh, they just featured in New Orleans, but it was one of those bands. Kane you, Hill. Yeah, right. Kane Hill, I love that band. Yeah, and I was like, this song, especially "Power and Pain," would go perfect on their show. Yeah. So. Once it's up, let's just start sharing it with WWE. For sure. <laughs> and I, I think I know some people that know some people, one of those type of things. So yeah, I definitely need to reach out. And if anybody listening knows somebody, right? let's make this happen. Somebody else mentioned that for Bullets, we should get it on The Punisher. So I've been trying to find whoever's in charge of that music. And That'd be awesome. Get it on Netflix and Punisher, their next Punisher series. That would be great. That would be awesome. I know uh, L- Luke Cage is coming out this week, so it's too late for that. <laughs> yeah. Do you watch all those shows when you can? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, are you a big like Daredevil fan too? I, I like. I think Daredevil is probably my favorite out of all of them. Yeah. Yeah, I dig them. That's pretty good though too. Yeah, that one. That one was really good. You guys were at Rocklahoma this past May here in Oklahoma. That's a big deal every year because it's. You know, it's a nation. It's known nationwide. It's not just the Oklahoma festival. But uh, any bands that you saw that, that stuck out to you, and how was that whole experience? Uh, it was it was incredible. It was an incredible experience. There was a ton of bands. Like we stayed pretty much the whole weekend. So I don't even know how many bands we saw. There was <laughs> so many. But uh, perfect the circle. The day that we played was yeah. The day that we played was like the day that we really wanted. Right. And. Yeah, so headlining was a perfect circle, and I love that band. They're one of my favorite bands, and like we're not necessarily one of those bands that might get to tour with the perfect circle. So getting to even play the same day on a festival type thing is pretty pretty awesome. But yeah, uh, Yellow Wolf was actually blew me away too. Like I didn't expect him to come out with a full band and really interesting show he put on. So I was I was pretty pumped about his set. And uh, there's been rumors floating around that you're going to join Yellow Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let him know. Yeah. Let him know I'm down. <laughs> yeah, because y'all had a little interaction backstage, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, our bus was parked pretty close to the stage, and uh, me and my girl Kelsey were out with her dog, Phoebe. Right. Just hanging out. Yeah. And him and his entourage came walking by, and he just, like, stopped and started petting the dog and hanging out with Phoebe and being all friendly and Nobody else even knew who he was. Like the rest of the people that I was with standing outside even knew who he was. And he walked out. I was like, that was totally Yellow Wolf petting <laughs> your dog. And they're like, holy shit. That's crazy because just a few years ago, we would like watch Yellow Wolf videos on YouTube all the time. And now you're chilling yeah. with him. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's the only reason I knew who he was because I'd seen his videos. So yeah, did, so did he threaten to pop the trunk on you at, at any time? He did pop the trunk, and it was with a, a live band, which was really <laughs> a really cool interpretation. Oh, really? So, Man, I wish I would have seen. He had that. like drums and guitars and a fiddle player, and like it was it was pretty f-ing interesting. The whole show was really cool. That's cool. Um, I want to mention too that your, your singles that you've released and all the upcoming singles, people can get them on uh, a lot of different ways. But Bandcamp and we teamed up, everybody panic and nerds to men to offer this special promo on Bandcamp where people can name their own price. Yeah, <laughs> so it's peace in there. Yeah, <laughs> and we've been doing like this. This next one is actually coming out on Bandcamp first. Uh huh. I don't think a lot of people understand. I guess a lot of people are streaming these days, so it doesn't really matter. Like, that's what I do, too. I have, you know what I mean? I have the Google Play service where I just stream. I can play anything that's on there, so sure. you don't really have to download it anymore. But still, for the bands that I like, I like to go get the songs that they have and have them as my own. But Well, I kind of wanted to um, ask, too, you know, the thought behind releasing the singles instead of the whole EP. Um, I just feel like it's. I feel like it's more productive that way. Mm-hmm. instead of just saying oh here's a whole record that gets lost in another month or so because eight million other records have come out right like just staggering releases and releasing songs like we we already working on more songs for once this is done to just continue the process so and is that kind of based on just the way people consume music th- digitally and through the internet now yeah i mean a lot of that you know what i mean every friday there's hundreds of thousands of songs coming out you know what i mean so i feel like in my in my mentality of it if you release a record these days you just put 12 songs or 15 songs, however many songs you put on your record right and you just release it all at once like that i mean it's basically in a month or two pretty much dead like everybody's already heard it they don't care anymore they're they've already downloaded or streamed 20 other bands trying to keep music flowing instead of just dropping a record like the old days and just dropping a record and waiting a few years and dropping another one we just want to keep music flowing is what our our goal is so we're trying to get into that groove of just keeping new music coming out as often as possible i wanted to ask you uh just in your own personal collection what what music have you been jamming out lately oh uh, i've been jamming dead still i love those guys they're love really dead. good yeah yeah, they're one of my favorites. Did you go see them in uh, L.A. recently? No, I missed them, but they are going to be back out here uh, pretty soon. That's cool. I'm hoping that I can catch that one. And Did... then that Kane Hill band, I really love their new record, The Too Far Gone. Yeah, yeah. The the song that they played, uh, was it Lord of Lies or Lord of Flies? I can't remember. Lord of Flies, yeah. Yeah. And man, that song rocked. I love that band. Yeah. Uh, have you heard the Marilyn Manson Cry Little Sister single that he just put out? I did, and that, that whole thing just makes me laugh. With uh, <laughs> I mean, it's cool that he did it. It sounds cool, whatever, but... Who's covered that song the best? <laughs> the original guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's fair. Uh, but there's been a lot of versions, including Didn't Ricketts Do It? Yeah, and that's why I, I say it makes me laugh, because mm-hmm. the, the whole situation with that song was kind of weird. Like, the original dude came out and sang on it with us and, like, brought us samples from the original song that we were supposed to, supposedly able to use. And Gerard something, right? Yeah, Gerard McMahon. Is his, yeah, that's his right. Name. Yeah. G, G. Tom Mack is what he goes by. Oh, okay. And I, because I, I, I remember there was another, there was another one of those, not, they weren't a metal band, but uh, I can't remember, they, but they did a cover of it not too long ago. And, uh, you know, it's still years ago, but it's been Seasons covered. after, yeah. Yeah. It's been covered yeah, a few times. Reference. It's kind of funny because theirs came out like right after ours did, but mm-hmm. uh, we worked with the original guy, like everything was in place. And somehow when our record came out, he got, uh, I guess it was Warner Brothers or whoever. I can't remember now. Whoever owned the rights to it, right? To send us a cease and desist. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So we had to take it off all online stuff, and we couldn't press any more records with it. And, <laughs> and then, like right after that, that seasons after one came out. It was funny. And then, then that song's been put out so many times. It's just that I'm pretty sure it's that dude. Like, yeah, getting all these people to do it. Yeah, so he gets a little bit of cash. Yeah, he can still make money off of that song. That's great. He needs to. <laughs> Here's what you should do, though, to be a little different. Maybe y'all do the um, the Tim Capella song, 
What, you know, the saxophone one where he's got the shirt. Oh, yeah, and, the sexy sax man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe get the, your new bass player. He could uh, he could play the sax for that song. I think that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> you are doing some recording out in L.A. and uh, or Anaheim, rather. And uh, also, you're available to do some in Oklahoma. You know, I, I wanted to bring it up because you recorded, like, my band when we were still together, Killer Gandhi, our record and i still listen to that and think this sounds like a million bucks you know what i mean uh and it doesn't cost a million bucks which is great <laughs> but <laughs> but you you were you were still doing that correct yeah i've i've been getting back into it now that i haven't been as crazy with all the other things i was doing so mm-hmm. uh yeah i've been working out at cavi gold studios doing stuff and trying to get in to some more mixing i've been mixing for some bands and mastering some songs for some bands and yeah i have a i'll be out in oklahoma for like a week or two recording some songs for a few bands there and yeah just trying to get back into it some more and i always enjoy it so being creative with other people is always fun and helps me be more creative on my own too so absolutely i i totally know what you mean by that how can people get a hold of you if they're wanting to you know book some recording time with you um, smoke signals works pretty good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like uh Facebook or something like that. Just, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much on all the social medias or I'm sure somebody, you know, might know me that can get you in touch with me or whatever. So sounds good. And what's coming up next for everybody panic? Uh, we're releasing the new track, working on some touring ideas, hopefully mm-hmm. before summer's over. Taking um, Brad Reed with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going. <laughs> I love it. I love uh, it. We're just working on all kinds of stuff, man. I'm, I'm, in the last week, I've worked on music, artwork, business stuff, all kinds of things, you know, all geared towards everybody panic. So there's right on. Tons, of thing, tons of things in the works. We're trying to just turn it into a machine that never stops with any of it. So. <laughs> exactly. Right on. What's the best way? Do you guys have a website or is it Bandcamp or, you know, what's the best way to follow you guys? Yeah, wherever you prefer. Um, we have a official site, everybodypanicmusic.com. Mm-hmm. And that'll, that'll basically link you into everything we have. But And that's where you yeah, can get I mean, the sweet Bandcamp. merch, right? Yeah, you can get our merchandise through there. and I mean, you get to everything. You can get to our music or merch or any, any of that through the official site or if you're into Bandcamp. You can download our music for free or for $8 million if you wanted to pay all that. (laughs) Do that. That would be even better. Yeah, I'm just waiting on that one person that really wants to do that. (laughs) Well, you could do maybe like the Wu-Tang and offer a a record that only one person can buy. Yeah, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) Well, Provo, I thank you so much for uh, coming on and uh, really dig the music and would like to see you back in Oklahoma City real soon. Yeah, we're working on it for sure, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. It's a brand new Cam's Jams. Cameo got to talk with Adam and Kizzy from right here in Oklahoma City. They have a new CD and a show at Tower Theater this week. Find out about that and more on Cam's Jams. Your boy Cameo's in studio with some fellow Classonites. Got Adam and Kizzy in the building. Comet stand up. That's right. So tell me, ever since uh, your deal with Usher, how's that been? Uh, well, that it's really opened a lot of doors for us, you know, like uh, just being able to say we achieved that. And then, of course, you know, having shared space with someone so iconic, um, it's definitely allowed us to say, hey, we're here and we'd like to share our music with you. And people are more inclined to say, oh, well, sure. You yeah. know, uh-huh. yeah, you could say it has ushered. Uh, I see what you did there. A new round, you see? There's a dad joke. Okay, okay. <laughs> There's a dad right. joke right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm be hitting, so. with those, hitting you with those all day. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. So, tell me what that experience was like working with Usher. Um, it was it was extremely exciting. Um, it was a really awesome day. There was a lot about the day. You know, there was a lot of. Um, intrigue a lot of mystery yeah you know? the part that the fans didn't really get to see was the production that right. was going on with megastar so like we were it was very secretive we couldn't have our phones so right. we couldn't we couldn't update anybody what was yeah. happening but um 
you know, it was cool getting to hang out with the other top five artists and, um, you know, just kick it with them, crash the craft service table. And, you know, yeah. uh, the Usher thing was a surprise. So yeah. when we walked into the studio, and that's the part that's on the video mm-hmm. that you can still watch on the app. Um, when we walked into the studio, we were not expecting to see Usher. Right. And he's about our right. size. You know, he's, really? not a, he's not a big dude at right. all. I yeah. thought he was like at least like 6'2", 6'3". He two, six, might three. have had like a half inch on me. Yeah. Wow. Maybe. Okay. So uh, he was sitting in this studio chair. And it was way taller than him. <laughs> and so we thought we walked into an empty studio. Right. And then he just turns around and it's like Usher's right there. Yeah, and it's right. like, oh, crap. I think I said that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, neat. Yeah, That's it pretty was neat. cool. And he had a lot of really encouraging things to say. He um, he told us he loved the music, yeah. you know. And mm-hmm. there was even a part in the song that we played where, because he had been listening to it, mm-hmm. he was like, this part coming up, this is my favorite part. And then the part happened, and he was like, that part's crazy. The part's crazy. Yeah. So, That's awesome. Yeah, so that was dope. Having like, somebody big like that, you know, give you props on what, you, what you've what worked on is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, Absolutely. Pretty cool. For sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Super affirming. Yeah. And it's, it's affirming anytime someone says, we appreciate your music, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can imagine knowing, um, meeting someone of his caliber, saying that, um, it it tells you uh, one of two things, and he actually did say those things. You know that um, he believed that we were going to be in this business. You know, um, he you know he said things like, "What did he say?" He was like, "You're gonna." He said, "We'll experience the highs and lows of the industry." Of the industry His main know, message to us was wow. to just make sure we protect our love, right? Through uh, throughout the experience, which was also mm-hmm. affirming because that's really our mantra, and mm-hmm. on our new record, three though. Kizzy wrote a whole song about Mm. that very thing called Perimeter, where it's all about protecting your love and putting a fortress around the things that that you love, the things that feed you, Mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that you never get caught up in giving it away for something that's shiny but ultimately won't last. That's awesome, man. And and, and you can just tell just by – y'all just have this aura about you that, you know, just exudes love. And and, and, and I really I really enjoy that. My class of night people still in the building, Adam and Kizzy. Bars. And they do got bars. New album out. Yes. Tell us about it. Super dope. Three dope. Okay, so this is our third studio album. It's released on Ropa Dope Records. Mm -hmm. few things that we think are really special about the album is um, there was a long hiatus between the last record and this record. Mm -hmm. And during that time, we went through a lot of intense things. The band almost broke up. We ended up moving away from Oklahoma City, um, and we were living in a defunct homestead out in the middle of nowhere trying to figure out how we were going to get back on track. Our van had broken down. Our um, all of our connects were moving away, and mm-hmm. you know it, it felt like we had gone from momentum to just a complete standstill. Mm-hmm. And in that period, uh, like magically, it felt magic. Mm-hmm. Things just started to happen, mm-hmm. and so we ended up in our dream studio, working with an exceptionally stellar team on this record. And the mm-hmm. production on the album is mm-hmm. the other thing that I feel is really special because we did the whole thing with just our voices and keyboards. Right. Awesome. So we're the only musicians on it. Mm-hmm. All of the drums are me beatboxing. All of the oh, bass dope. was my left hand. All of the keys was my right hand. All of the orchestrations you hear is Kizzy's voice mm-hmm. and my voice in the background, and mm-hmm. of course singing and rapping. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. It Y'all was, Ray Charles that album, then, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. We was yeah. like Prince up in there. That's right. <laughs> right. Shoot, hey, man, if you don't got nobody to help you out with, you got to do it yourself. Right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, that's, you know, what an artist is. Um, you got to take whatever you have and use it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, haven't listened to the album just yet, mm-hmm. but uh, I can I can already tell that it's, it's going to be fire. Yeah. Fuego. Mm-hmm. But um, y- y'all have a, a deal going down at the Tower Theater. That's right. What? Tell me about that. What's going on? So at 8 p.m., we will be on the stage at Tower Theater performing for the first time live all of the new music from our our album. Cool. And we're going to have some really cool featured guests, Mm -hmm. JB, Original Flow, Fresh. Um, We're even bringing down our good friend and spectacular musician, Caleb Sean McCampbell from the Funky Knuckles. Formerly the Funky Knuckles. Formerly the Funky Knuckles. Yeah. yeah, also the Search Committee, Oklahoma yeah. City's premier hip-hop brass band, which you may have seen on social media going around yeah. doing pop-up shows. It was pretty much like uh, guerrilla 
showing up, you know, and, <laughs> and just bombing people with good vibes and energy. So that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, and the tower, of course, is like one of the dopest spots Please. in Oklahoma City. So, yes, it is. So yeah, excited. we're we feel very fortunate to mm-hmm. to get to take advantage of that main stage. Right. So doors open at seven p.m. Yeah. Can you get tickets anywhere? Absolutely. Just go to our website, adamandkizzy.com, um, and just wait for a little second. A little pop-up will show up for you, and you can just order your tickets right there. You can also order tickets at towertheaterokc.com. Um, or at and the tower if you just, box office. Yeah, if you scroll down, you'll see our, our, our pretty and handsome faces That's right. right. <laughs> and order the tickets and those are $12 in advance okay. but if you just want to get it at the box office it's $15 cool cool so uh, very inexpensive yeah. and um, and like I said they are fellow class and I, it's a if you don't know what class and SAS is it's uh, the school of arts and smarts <laughs> and um, <laughs> but yeah we have total total awesome talent that comes out of that school yes. and um, you got to check them out this Friday at the Tower Theater they hit the stage at 8 o'clock and you know we play uh uh, you said uh, Original Flow, uh, JB. We play them on this radio station. So, uh, yes, you know who they are. And you got to come out and uh, support uh, local artists at the yeah. Tower Theater this Friday, 8 o'clock. That's it. So Adam That'd and Kizzy, appreciate y'all coming out. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Us. Thank yeah. you. It's good seeing Thank y'all. Yeah, it's good seeing you always. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. I do what I do. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. Do's it well. Thank you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> That's a wrap on this episode of Nerds to Men. Catch us on Stitcher, iTunes Podcast, Spreaker, YouTube, and please leave a review anywhere that you listen to the show. That would help us out. We do this weekly podcast to bring you the latest in all the movie news, music news, comic book news, and we thank Buck Berlin. Provo, Adam and Kizzy, our producer Forrest Francis, Cameo, I'm Brad Reed. Have a great week.